so for the most part, um, we've gone over the central PA. Central PA is coming over the top with that grip off to the side. is very good for probably right around the T3, T4 level and moving south. Uh, I do find for patient care, it's easier to stick with what our tact was when we were doing central PAs in the cervical spine, which is kind of standing at the head and then moving progressively down the spine as you're testing. So in this case, I've got the spinous process like this. I put one thumb on the one side of that spinous process, one on the other, so I'm kind of sandwiching that spinous process and I'm not pr pushing directly on it, which is uncomfortable. So from here, I can, if I need to, um, just move into the thoracic spine by asking the patient to lift their head slightly. Good, and then let it rest down. And then the first one I come to that is stationary is gonna be our C7. From there, I'm just going to lock my arms out. And again, I'm pressing down by just leaning at the trunk to allow my thumbs to move, or um, sorry, feel the movement as much as possible. Move to the next spinous process. And then remember, as we move more into the thoracic spine, you would expect that there to be more stiffness as you continue moving into this area, just because of the limitations that the spine presses on. So it is pretty relative uh, when you're looking at stiffness superior to the mid and then to the lower spine. Unilateral PAs for this area are going to be just dropping off to the side. It's a little harder to identify uh, the transverse process in this little TL junction here, especially the upper thoracic spine, just because there is a lot of muscular uh, tissue above that. So I usually just drop into the inner space and use the inner space uh, or that laminar groove region to give me the unilateral PAs.